it has been 56 days and we have beautiful lush tomatoes and beautiful growth 56 days ago i placed a cutting on this side and a cutting on this side in some hydrotin or hydrogen media and this is what we have this is a simple little recirculating hydroponic system i built in my backyard i will show you the growth throughout the different days how it's been doing up until this point at the end i will also do a quick little overview so you can see the products that i used uh, the items that I used to build this, I will place links in the description below so you can source them if you feel the need to, as well as kind of like a build list. Let me show you the course of its growth now. So there you have it, 56 days brings us here and we got these beautiful tomatoes. We have some up in the front, we have those ripening up. There's little baby tomatoes everywhere. They're even hanging off the side of the container. Got some more back here. This could have been strung up or trellised. There's nothing wrong with that. I would probably recommend it at this point. You could probably attach some type of supports to the tote. This is a 27 gallon tote that I bought at Office Depot. You see these a lot in hydro hydroponic videos with these yellow lids. They're structurally stronger than your typical Rubbermaid because they do have some type of reinforcement here, little features. I did put two plants in here, one on this side, one on that side, and I wanna say that the growth of both are just absolutely remarkable. I just placed the cuttings inside of a three inch net cup or net pot, and then I put some hydrogen clay around it From there, I set up a recirculating type of system that runs 24 hours. I don't think it's necessary for it to run 24 hours. I just don't have a timer on it. Probably on and off every 15 minutes would suffice. Uh, again, part of the fun of this is the experimentation. And uh, that's what you get to do. And that's why I built this. And to show that you can produce fruit in such a short amount of time from cuttings in a hydroponic system. So after I put those plants there, I set up the feeding system, the feeding mechanism. And what I have is I have a small 15 watt pump down in the bottom. You can use a bigger pump, you can use a smaller pump. As long as it pumps the fluid up to the top, that's all that matters. Uh, the method in which you do it, you can set up PVC with two drilled out holes or you can use drip tubing with a drip emitters. That'd probably be best. You don't wanna use anything that's too fine because that may get clogged. So back there you can see the drip emitter top that brings it out to these little lines if i had to do this again i don't think i would have these little drip lines and especially not coming around the back i would have something very simple that comes from the middle right to the edge and just pours it on top of the media on top of the roots the same would go for the other side i just worked with what i had but you could literally just place these right over here and not use this uh type of a collection tube or you could just make the whole thing out of pvc i used whatever i had on hand again this isn't a tutorial this is kind of for inspiration and motivation to build your setup as you can hear my pump is very noisy there's no oxygenation there's no aeration pump that is actually just a normal magnetic drive pump pond pump i've just had it for years so at this point it's already making noise i'm going to show you the inside now so you can see what's going on so normally i maintain the water level about here most deep water culture setups have the water all the way to the top of the bottom of the neck cup. I don't have it like that. And the reason why is I think that leads to uh, just the roots begin to rot in the, in, the, in the hot water. And I think this method here allows the roots to get more oxygen, similar to a Dutch bucket or aeroponics type of setup. What you could do is you can drill a hole in the side so that when you're refilling this container, it doesn't fill up above the root line and drown the roots. I would recommend that. So here you can see the water 
drips from the top down onto the roots and down down the roots. Some of the roots sit in the water, but remember the whole thing is not under underwater. It's just the end tip. Over here you can see the pump down here, which pumps right back up and sends it to the top. If this bucket were to fill up all the way to the top, it would kill the plants because those the, the plants develop air roots up on the top up here that without the presence of oxygen would kind of die out and drown. Okay. Now for the type of fertilizer I use, I know I'm going to get this question. I always do. Remember, link will be down below. I use the Master Blend 41838 kit, the tomato formula, and it also comes with Epsom salt and calcium nitrate. The directions to mixing it is present on the label, so you guys should just follow the directions. And if you feel the need to, then titrate the pH after you, you add the nutrients. I try to keep this nutrient solution between 800 and 1200 ppm, and as you can see, it appears to be working. These are just absolutely beautiful. I will have another series on doing this in a bucket, which is over here on this side, but I'm not gonna show that. This was just a quick and dirty little setup that I did in my house, and it has brought us beautiful tomatoes and a beautiful plant. See, we still have little baby ones coming on. There's clusters everywhere. That's all there is to it. There's all kinds of questions out there whether or not you can have water go directly onto the roots. Uh, as we can see, that's fine. Uh, there's questions whether or not you need oxygenation. No, I don't have it. It appears to be fine. Um, whether or not you need to track your pH. I'm sure it would be optimal to, to track your pH, but I haven't. And as you can see, it's also fine. What I do is I just maintain the 800 to 1200 ppms from the beginning, the whole time. I run the system the same the entire time. I don't, I don't adjust for seedlings. I don't adjust for cuttings. I don't adjust for fruit, for leaf, for anything. For, for leafy greens, it's always the same. And oh, we got an ugly one down here that got bit by some type of pest. Um, I don't really have much pest problems either. I do trim off some of the, uh, the foliage sometimes because then it starts drinking a lot, drinking a lot of the nutrients. So you just come here and I like cutting some of the leaves in half. And you just monitor the leaf. If the, if the leaves turn really yellow, uh, it's probably uh, recommended that you would check your concentration. But anyway, guys, I just want to show you that it's possible 56 days from cutting on a determinate uh, plant, a bush style tomato plant, a dwarf patio choice, all the way to fruit within 56 days. I know there's a lot of questions out there whether or not you can clone or propagate determinate tomatoes, but I can tell you, here it is. Thank you all again. Keep following, stay subscribed, smash that like button if you guys love this content and these experiments. Remember all the links are in the description below. If you're trying to source any of the components, I'll place my recommendations there. I might not be able to find the exact things like this pump that's very old already, but I will put a reasonable uh, similar recommendation down below. Anyway, thank you guys. Till next time, peace.